Hey, fourth graders, welcome back. Ooh, my name is Mrs. Lawson. I am so glad that you're here today. And you know, today we're working on cause and effect. And I was thinking that my hands were really dry. So I put on lotion, right? And that's my cause. But what's the effect? What does putting on lotion do to my hands? Yeah, it makes them softer. Um, and that's why a lot of people put on lotion. It makes your skin not so dry and cracked. So, you know, we're working with cause and effect today. You guys do this all the time. When you're facing problems or when things aren't going right, like with your skin being dry or other things, it causes you to do something and that makes an effect. So let's go ahead and start this lesson. We're on lesson six um, with anatomy of a volcanic eruption. And we're reading a few pages today, 32 through 35. So let's talk about our learning intention. We are learning to use details from the text to draw those inferences and explain the causes and effects of volcanic activity on the environment and people. So we know we are successful today when we can identify the structure of the text. I'm sorry, I put my rings back on from I put on the lotion. So we're, we know we're successful when we identify the structure. How is this section of the text built? Then we're gonna look back in the text, find details, and then we're gonna draw inferences about the text. So let's talk about foundational skills. And we kind of started this in the last lesson, but we're specifically focusing on synonyms today. And my always reminder is synonym it means the same. I just, it always comes back to me. So they are words that have similar meanings or meanings that are almost the same. So if we have the word violent, what could be a word that means the same as something that's violent? One word that comes to my mind is harmful. Something's violent, it's causing harm. Or it could cause a disaster, right? So there are some synonyms for violent. What about forceful. Somebody is using force. It could be a synonym, fourth graders. Yeah, they're strong, they're energetic, they're full of energy. So that could be a synonym for forceful. What about harmful? What could be something that means the same as harmful? Look at you, fourth graders. Yeah, hurtful, damaging. So if something's causing harm, it is causing damage or it's hurting you. So those are some synonyms. Great job. So for your foundational skill today, you're just going to have a list of words um, and you're going to have to match them up with the correct synonym or word that means the same. You guys got this. Take your time. Look them up in the dictionary if you need to. But most of all, just really use that brain and think through what words you're putting in there. Okay. Vocabulary. Miss Lawson's favorite. What is that vocabulary word today? Yeah, it's benefits. So the five amazing benefits of outdoor running is you'll boost your immune system, you'll burn more calories, you'll release feel good hormones, you'll get a burst of vitamin D and you'll work out longer and harder. So those are some benefits of running outside. Well, let's look at this part of the text, the good. Though there are sometimes violent and destructive volcanoes, oh, though they are sometimes violent and destructive, volcanoes provide many benefits for our planet. What could benefit mean, fourth graders? Yeah, it's a good or helpful result or effect. So it's something good that's happening. Did you guys know there's a good thing that comes from volcanoes? Kind of crazy. So what could be a synonym for the word benefits? What could be something that means the same? Hmm. What do you guys think? Yes, that's what I was thinking. A benefit or an advantage, something good that's coming from them. Good job, fourth graders. And what about an antonym for the word benefits? What do you guys think? That's a little tougher, isn't it? Mm -mm. So hopefully you pause your video if you need a little more time to think it through, but maybe an antonym for benefits is 
like a holdback or a, oh my gosh, I just had it. A disadvantage is something you could think of or um, a negative effect, um, different things like that. I'm going to think of what I had earlier. Now, the trick for you guys is to use the word, oh, it's a drawback was what I was thinking. That's a good antonym. So something that's not good. But now what you guys need to do is use the word benefits in a sentence. I know you guys can do it. All right, we're on to chapter four. So it is about volcanic effects. So volcanic effects, the good. Though they are sometimes violent and destructive, volcanoes provide many benefits for our planet. Minerals. Many of Earth's most valuable resources are found in volcanic rock. These include minerals such as fluorine, sulfur, zinc, copper, lead, tin, uranium, tungsten, silver, mercury, and gold. So there's some pictures. We got copper, zinc, gold, fertile soil. The richest soil is often found in places with volcanic activity. That's because volcanic rock is filled with minerals and nutrients that plants need to grow. In Indonesia, for example, farmers can harvest three crops of rice a year in a volcanic soil. Farmers planting in non-volcanic soil harvest much less. So new land. Volcanoes also create new land on Earth. Hawaii Islands, for example, is constantly growing. Geothermal power. Geothermal heat, geo means earth and thermal means heat. Geothermal heat is produced in earth's core and mantle. It heats the rocks and water deep in earth's crust. People can drill into earth and use the heated water and steam to produce electricity and power plants. Really cool, so that's um, heat coming from the earth a geothermal power station in Iceland. So this is where they're using that Earth's heat. And then Reykjavik, so or R is the capital of Iceland. This city or more than 100,000 people, of more than 100,000 people is heated almost entirely by geothermal energy. Hmm. Volcanoes provide many benefits. Oh, so it's the bad. They provide many benefits, but they can also cause some problems. So that could also be an uh, antonym, problems to benefits. Unusual weather. In 1815, Mount Tambra was erupted in Indonesia. It was the world's biggest volcanic eruption in more than 1,600 years. The next summer, Thomas Jefferson recorded details about the odd weather that the United States was experiencing. The weather was very cold. Snow fell in some parts of New England in June. The entire Northern Hemisphere experienced what is called the year without a summer. Without warm weather, farmers were unable to harvest a crop that year. Many people suffered as a result. Scientists believe that volcanic ash from the Tambora eruption caused the year without a summer. The ash blocked out sunlight, which in turn cooled down Earth and change weather patterns. So disrupted air travel. Volcanoes disrupt air travel. This can cause big problems for the global economy. Ash clouds are dangerous for airplanes. Even the smallest particles can cause engine failure if the amount of ash is big enough. So the Frankfurt, Germany airport during the eruption of E in 2010. Over here, the ugly. The ugly effects from Plinian and Ultraplinian eruptions don't occur very often. These huge eruptions cause serious damage. Pyroclastic flows. Pyroclastic flows are the most deadly and dangerous parts of volcanic eruptions. These avalanches of death scorch everything in their path. They cover the ground in a thick blanket of gray ash and rocks. Nothing is safe in the path of a pyroclastic flow. Plants, animals, and humans can be killed. So this forest in Chile was damaged by a pyroclastic flow in 2008. All right, so we're down to lava flows. Lava flows create new land, but they also change existing land along their paths. A lava flow can destroy homes and other properties. And other property. 
and then I skip this one. Lahars. Volcanic mud flows are common in eruptions. These heavy walls of volcanic mud can carry boulders, trucks, buildings, and even roads and bridges. The amount of water and ice near an erupting volcano affects the size and number of lahars. Whew. Okay, so let's look at the text structure. How does the way the text is organized under the headings help readers answer the question, what are good and bad effects of a volcanic eruption? So if we look, it's asking us how it's set up. Well, if we needed to know the good effects, it's all under the good a heading, right? If we needed the bad effects, it's all under the bad headings. So the author did a really good job of organizing this so we could go find that information we needed in an easy way. Okay, so as we talked about cause and effect, an effect is what happens and a cause is why something has happened. So effects can be good or bad. So we're gonna do a few of these um, together. So get a piece of paper or a whiteboard. We're gonna go through some cause and effects from the story. So we're gonna start by looking at some positive effects of volcanoes. So the first positive effect we're gonna look at is the richest soil is often found in places with volcanic activity. So what causes this to happen? We're gonna look back in that text and figure out what is the cause? Why is the soil rich near volcanoes? So pause your video, see if you can figure it out first without any help. All right, fourth graders, let's see if you got the right answer. So the cause, why the soil is rich, is volcanic rock is filled with minerals and nutrients. So down here it says, the richest soil is often found in places with volcanic activity. This is because volcanic rock is filled with minerals and nutrients that plants need to grow. So it's right there in that text. Let's try it again. Let's see if you can do this one. The effect, people can use the heated water and steam to produce electricity. Why did that happen? Why are they able to do that, fourth graders? Pause this video if you need some extra time. Hopefully you guys found that geothermal heat is produced in the Earth's core and mantle, and that's why they can use that water and steam to produce electricity, because it's in from the core and the mantle. Good job, fourth graders. Let's do one more. So the effect. It says new land is created. Um, new land is created. Existing land is changed. Homes and other property are destroyed. What causes all of these changes? So down here, it says... Um, lahars, it says mud flows are common in eruption. These walls of volcanic mud can carry boulders. I'm not seeing anything about the land changing. It says lava flow creates new land, but they also change existing land along their path. Okay, there it is, fourth graders. What causes it? It's the lava flows. That is what can make new land, what can change land, and also homes and other property being destroyed is all because of lava. Man, you guys are pros at this already. So let's think more. Why are the effects of volcanoes important to understand? Why do we need to know this? What do you think? Okay, fourth graders, I'm hearing some of you say some really good things. It is important to know some of these effects, especially the bad ones, because if we know them, hopefully we can stay safe right? If we know what's coming, we can prepare and stay safe if a volcan volcanic eruption occurs. Okay, so let's do one little piece of going back in the detail for text. So underline evidence from the author that supports her view that volcanoes provide benefits. So I'm not going to go over this one, but see if you could go back in there and underline um, or write down why do they think there are good things from volcanoes? 
many of the Earth's most valuable resources are found in a volcanic rock. These include minerals such as fluorine, sulfur, zinc, and they list out all of these different minerals. So make sure you write down what you think, fourth graders. Okay, so now, since we thought about that, what can you infer about these minerals from the fact that the author considers them to be a benefit? So it kind of gives it away. The benefits that they give is that they give us minerals, right? All these valuable resources come from these rocks formed by volcanoes. So what can we infer about these minerals? What do you guys think? Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. An inference we can make is if they're saying that all of these minerals come from volcanoes and they're important, we can assume that they're valuable. They have worth, we need them. So that's an inference we can make based on details from the text. Okay guys, it's your turn. You're gonna go and figure out what is the relationship between geothermal energy and volcanoes? What are some possible advantages of using geothermal energy? So there's two parts to this question. First, the relationship between that type of energy and volcanoes. And two, what could be some advantages? What are some benefits of geothermal energy? All right, good luck fourth graders. Thank you so much for coming. You did amazing today. Bye.